Historians are not at all certain of precisely when the Celts became a significant force in the settlement of Ireland, but Celtic invasions are thought to have commenced around 600 BC. These invasions were by various Celtic tribes which were politically unconnected, yet were related culturally and linguistically. The tribe destined to have the most lasting effect were the Gael, believed to have come from Roman Gaul around 50 BC. What is certain is that the Gaels were as much influenced by the highly developed culture they found already existed in Ireland as it was by them. Consequently, as historian Donacha O'Corrin points out, the Gaelic language which developed is an indigenous realisation of Celtic heavily influenced by the pre-Celtic languages spoken in Ireland. By the 2nd century AD, the Celtic domination of Irish culture was so complete that the Irish were referred to in Roman letters as Gauli and by the Greeks as Celtoi. At that time, the country was governed by Brehan law, a system centuries ahead of its time with highly civilised rulings regarding, for example, divorce and women's rights. It must be remembered that until the introduction of feudalism by the Normans, as has been pointed out repeatedly by the likes of James Connolly, Peter Burris Vardellis and even Frederick Engels, Ireland was a kind of prototype communist society with principles of common ownership by the people of sources of food and maintenance on land collectively owned by the clans. The Ser Acme, free men of property, acted as patrons of the Ace Dana, a highly respected professional class who interpreted and applied the Brehan laws. The Ace Dana were made up of druids or priests. Brehans, who were legal arbitrators, and filii or bards, poets and musicians who composed and sang or recited tales of Celtic achievements, particularly heroic exploits. On first hearing the legends of prehistoric Ireland, we must bear in mind that the Celtic culture was an oral one, and as such was subject to corruption, exaggeration and fanciful change through constant retelling. As Sean of Whelan points out, it is difficult to distinguish fact from the mythical fiction the ancient Celts devised and told of themselves. As there are no written documents describing these times, they are regarded as prehistory. The first written documents regarded as impeccable historical sources are letters both by and about Patrick, the missionary credited with converting Ireland to Christianity in the 5th century. But here again, it is difficult to tell fact from fiction, as there seem to have been at least two people thought to be St. Patrick, one of them reported as having lived for as long as 150 years. Nevertheless, Christianity's effect was such that within two centuries, Ireland became known as the Island of Saints and Scholars, as its many missionary disciples of Patrick carried Ireland's golden age of learning all over mainland Europe.